Hello, I'm Dave Hart with the Winslow, Arizona Church of Christ. I'm the preacher there and I am so glad that you have chosen to join us. Today we're going to take a look at the first of a three-part um, series of sermons called Faith, Hope, and Love. Faith, hope, and love. These are, these are great things. These are, are vital things for a Christian to have and these are all things at times in our life that can be difficult for us. Sometimes uh, it, it's hard to have the kind of faith that we need to have. At times we can give up hope or lose hope. And it's not always easy to love the way that God would have us to love. But these are all things that all Christians must strive for. We must understand what they are, too. Sometimes we have a misunderstanding of things. For instance, when it comes to love, that we're to have love. Well, we, we are, of course, to have love, but we're also to have hatred for certain things also. And we'll get into that when we get to the Sermon on Love. So it's important that, that we not only have these things, but we understand what they are, and we also grow in these things. So these sermons are um, inspired by the Bible verse, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So these are all vital things for a Christian to have. These are all important things for a Christian to have. But the Bible says the greatest is love. Love is going to be the only thing that lasts after this life. Do you realize that? When, when we see the Lord face to face, we won't need faith anymore. Faith will become reality. We won't need hope anymore because hope will have been realized. But there's still going to be love. There's still going to be love. So, so the Bible's not saying that faith and hope aren't important because they certainly are. But it is saying that of all these, love is the most important. So let's start our study today. And this week we're going to look at faith. Next week, hope. And then the next week, Lord willing, we'll look at love. So we're going to take a look at faith today. And, and uh, what better verse to start out with than Hebrews 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we know that we have to have faith. We cannot come to God without faith. We must believe that he is. We must believe that he is God, that there is a God. And, and we can know that God through reading the Bible. We also need to know and understand that he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. So we must seek after God. We must continue to seek after God until the Lord calls us home or he comes back to get us. Now, one thing, if, if you are a member of the Church of Christ, especially you've probably heard this before, been accused of this, that um, you, you know, they'll say that you downplay faith. That, you know, because we believe what the Bible says about baptism, that, that we somehow make faith less important or not as important, which is an absolute lie. Listen, you cannot be saved without faith. You can go and you can be baptized a hundred thousand times and you will not be saved if you do not have faith. We teach this. We teach this as, as a step to, to salvation. We teach this as, as uh, one of the first things we must do. We must hear the word of God and then we must believe it. We must, we must have faith. So don't let anybody ever tell you or don't ever believe about the Church of Christ that we don't think that faith is important because we believe that faith is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely and, um, essential to salvation, just as essential as baptism. You can't be saved without baptism, and you can't be saved without faith. And we in the Churches of Christ absolutely affirm that, and believe that, preach that, and teach that. Romans 10, verse 17, another extremely important passage when it comes to faith. 
Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So biblical faith comes by hearing. Now I say biblical faith because there's people out there that have faith in all kinds of things. We know those Muslim terrorists when they flew into those twin towers, they had some kind of tremendous faith to be able to do that. Um, so, so we see people with faith all over the place, faith in themselves, faith in science, faith in doctors, faith in, you know, you, there again, you, you can't live without faith. When you get in your car in the morning, you get in your car and you come to a stoplight or a stop sign, you have faith that if you push on the brakes, it's going to stop your car, right? Now, the problem is, when it comes to things like that, the brakes may not always work. Sometimes something can happen. People who put their faith into a false god is putting their faith into a false god that's not true. That's not the reality of the situation. But we put faith in God and, 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 and the way that we know about God, the way faith comes to us is by hearing the word of God there again and believing it. If we want our faith to grow, if we want a stronger faith, a more powerful faith, then we need to study God's Word more, don't we? That's where we place our faith in, is God's Word, because God's Word comes from God. And when we believe what God's Word says, we have faith. And then we put our faith into action. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So, um... So yes, us in the Church of Christ, we absolutely, absolutely believe faith is mandatory. Faith is something we must have. Faith is essential. And faith is something that we should constantly be growing in. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, Faith is, is, is um, things that are hoped for, and of course we're, we're going to be talking about hope next week. But um, when the Bible does talk about hope, biblical hope, it is an assured hope. Okay, it's not like us saying, well, I hope it don't rain tomorrow, or I, or I hope I get, you know, ice cream for dessert, or, 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 or some kind of hope that isn't, that may not come about, that may not be the reality. Our hope is an assured hope, so we put our faith in the hope that the Bible gives us. And we must understand that hope, that hope is not necessarily in this world. Way too many Christians, you know, you have this, the, 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 you know, all, all these churches out here today um, preaching the prosperity gospel, that God is going to bless you on this earth with good health and riches and, and fame and fortune and all this stuff. Listen, that's a lie. God doesn't promise that in the New Testament. In fact, he... he, he he promises us some difficult times. That's the promise you get in some difficult times as you follow God. Our hope, our ultimate hope is not in this world. It's in the next world. It's at the coming of Jesus. And that's what we put our faith in so that no matter what happens in this world, whether we see it as good or bad, or whether it is good or bad, our hope is ultimately in the next life. Our faith is in the fact that Jesus is coming to get us, and Jesus takes care of us, and Jesus watch out, watches out for us. So faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now, our faith is not a blind faith. There are many people out there that say, oh, you Christians, you just have a blind faith, you this and that. No, our faith is based on many proofs and many facts. It's not a blind faith. You know, a blind faith would be saying, I'm going to jump off the, 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 the top of the church building and I'm going to fly. Now, that's a blind faith. That's a stupid faith. That's not going to happen unless you have some kind of a jet pack or, or, or um, uh, you know, um, you're attached to a big balloon or something. You, that, that's not going to happen. Our faith is based 
on many facts, many evidences. We don't have time to get into that right now, but if you um, would like to know more about the evidences and the proof of God, the proof of the Bible, a great place to go on the internet is a place called Apologetics Press. Apologetics Press. And, 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 and I tell you what, if, if you can read the stuff that they have and not believe that there's a God and he's the God of the Bible, then there's just something wrong with you. I'm sorry. Because they offer proof after proof after proof. So, so our faith is not a blind faith. It is a faith based on proofs. It is a faith based on facts. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So by grace you have been saved by through faith. So, so um, through the love of God, by the faith that we have in God, we are saved by God, and it is the gift of God. So... Um, it's not of ourselves. We, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. There's, there's no way um, to save ourselves. We, we are saved by the Lord. Now, understand, we have a part in our salvation, but we can't save ourselves. Let me, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let's say you were drowning. If you're like me, I'm a very, very poor swimmer. And uh, I, I've always, well, there's some times I've, I've gone out in waters that are above my head, but, but usually I was sorry for that. And one time somebody had to even save me. But let's say you were drowning and you were drowning and there was no way you were going to keep afloat. Even if you're the best swimmer in the world, you, you were at the end of your strength. And, and you were going down and somebody reached their hand out to you and you took your hand and reached up to it and grabbed it and that person pulled you up out of the water. Now understand here a couple of things. First off, you could not have saved yourself. You were dr going to drown. You were going to go down and that was going to be it. But at the same time, when that person reached out his hand, you had to have the proper response, didn't you? You had to grab a hold of the hand. You couldn't have been saved without that hand. You were going to be lost. But the proper response was you needed to reach out and grab that hand in order for him to pick you up. So I want you to understand this, that, that there again, we, we are saved by the grace of God, by the love of God that he has for us. Through the faith that we have in God, and, and, and faith, as, as we're going to see as we go along, always entails obedience. Faith always entails obedience action. So, God reaches down from heaven, gives us the offer of salvation, the free offer, the free gift. We, we can't pay for it. We can't go out there and do enough good deeds to get it. We, we, it is a free gift, but it is a conditional gift. And if you listen to some of my other sermons, I've explained this before, but we'll go over it real, real quickly here because it's such an important concept. No matter what gift somebody gives to you, there's going to be some kind of condition laid upon getting that gift. If I were to go up to you and pull out a wad of money, $1,000, and say, here, here's a gift to you you would still have to reach your hand out and grab that money out of my hands, wouldn't you? Do you understand? You'd have to have the proper response. It would be conditioned upon you reaching out. I, I could hold that money out there for the rest of my life, and you could choose not to take it out of my hand, therefore you wouldn't receive the gift. So every gift is, is conditional, including salvation. It's free. Anybody can have it. Anybody can get it. God wants everybody to have it, but there are conditions to it. There are conditions to it. I remember a, a, a long time ago now, when my son was young, he was really into Pokemon. He loved Pokemon. And it, it come around Christmas time, and there was a store, I don't know if they're, they're around anymore, called Toys R Us. Toys R Us. 
and 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 the first so many people in line got the this free Pokemon stuff. But you had to be one of the first, I don't know, 40 people in line to get it. Now, if anybody knows anything about me, I'm not a morning person. Uh, I'm a night person. I've always been a night person. I will always be a night person. I, I, I could stay up all night, no problem. And get, but getting up early is hard for me. But, but because I loved my son... And I wanted my son to have this, this Pokemon stuff that he really wanted. I got up really, really early. And I stood in line for a very long time, and it was very cold, to get some cheap cardboard Pokemon stuff. That stuff was free. They, they, they didn't lie. It was free. We walked in, we got this free stuff. But we had to meet their conditions. It's the same thing with God. God, it's a free gift by the grace of God, but we have to meet His conditions, and one of those conditions, of course, is faith. Second Corinthians five verse seven says, "For we walk by faith, not by sight." We, by walking by faith, it's more than we walking by what we see or even what we understand, and this is where faith can be difficult. This is where. Sometimes we don't understand. Let's say we're praying for something we're really praying for and it's really important to us and we think it's something that you know, God would want or God would want us to have and, and, and we really think this, maybe somebody in your family is really sick uh, or um, you know, maybe it's, it's about a job or a relationship, something really important. And it doesn't go the way we want we think it should go. We, it doesn't go the way we would hope that God would want it to go. And, and it can be very hard to understand. It can be very hard to understand. See, it's easy to have faith when God's saying yes, yes, yes. Isn't it easy then? You know, we go around and we tell people, and yes, look what God did for me, and I prayed for this, and and and, and you know, and, and and God allowed me to have this. Those are those are the easy times with faith, isn't it? But faith is about trusting in God, trusting in things that we don't know, trusting in things that we don't see. So when things don't go our way, that can be rough. That can be hard when it's really important. And those are the times where our faith really grows. Not so much when God's saying yes. It's in those times when God says no. I remember watching a movie a few years ago, and I think it was called A Greater Yes. A Greater Yes. And, and it was a, a Christian-based movie. It was a denominational group. You know, definitely did the movie, but but um, uh, it did make some good biblical points. And in this movie, there was a young girl, and she just wanted to live for God, and she just wanted to do everything for God, and 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 and, and then she got leukemia. And she had said in the beginning of this movie that her and God have a deal, and God always says yes to her. God always says yes to her. You know, she, she called herself God's girl. She was a, she was a girl who went around and, and really tried to live her, her faith. But then she got leukemia and she got really, really sick and they didn't know if she was going to live. And she prayed and prayed and, 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 and God got her through it. And she was so happy and, and, and she was more energized to work and to do things for God than she'd ever been before. And things were looking good, and she went and she told her parents that, that she wanted to dedicate her life to being a missionary. And not long after she did that, she walked in the bathroom, and I, and I believe she started seeing some blood come out of her nose, or I can't remember, something that, that she realized that leukemia was coming back. And this time, she died. She died. She, she, she still had all this faith and was praying. 
but she died. And hence the name of the movie, A Greater Yes. It, it was to show that even though God you know, had said yes and given her so much in this life and she had so much faith, the greatest yes that God was going to give her was to take her home to that wonderful reward in heaven. And like I say, if you watch this movie, not, not everything scriptural, but it does, does make some good scriptural points. That we walk by faith, whether God gives us the, the things that we want, the things that we're asking for, or rather God says no. We have faith that there is a purpose and a reason, maybe one we will never understand in this life, maybe it's one we will understand down the road. I know there's been times that I've asked God for things and he hasn't given them to me and, and, and these were life-changing things. These were things that were awful and they hurt at the time. God didn't work the way providentially that I would have liked for him to have at the time. But looking back now, I can see reasons and purposes that I couldn't see at that time. So we walk by faith, not by sight. There's been many times in my life when I've just thought, oh, this is the end. This is, this is, this is um, uh, over. And, and one of the Aliens movies, there, there, there was a guy that, there, there, um, you know, rocket ship, had crashed on this planet of all these aliens and the aliens was coming and the guy was you know crying it's game over game over man game over you know it's, there's no hope there's no I've been there I've, I've had my heart ripped out so hard I've had I've had circumstances I didn't know how I was going to get through or get around or get over and God has always got me through. And that's, and that's what I'm talking about, about faith. We put our trust in Him. We put our trust in His words. We put our trust in His promises. No matter if we get the things that we pray for and the, that we hope for on this earth, or we don't. We keep our faith in Him. Because we know that we have the promises of God. See, God hasn't promised me a, um, a Hummer. When I was younger, I wanted a Hummer so bad. Oh, I wanted a Hummer. God never promised me a Hummer. It would have been nice. I still would, would have mined one. If somebody out there has a Hummer you don't want, I'm right here. But God never promised me a Hummer. But he promised me to walk with me, to be with me, to hear my prayers and to take me to heaven someday. If I have faith and obedience. We can't put our faith in that God's going to do things that he did say that he was going to do. But we can put our faith in that God will do the things that he's promised us that he will do. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 5 says, That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, men's wisdom is flawed. Men's wisdom is flawed. Um, if, if you ever look back and you go on the internet, you can go on the internet and look at this and look at scientific facts from a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago. You know, you, you, you'd almost laugh about it. It, 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 it. They're so silly and so un unbelievable. You know, things like it's not necessary to wash your hands before you do surgery on somebody. You know, right now with the, with the um, pandemic, everybody's, you know, wearing the mask and they're telling you to wash hands and stuff. Well, they didn't know about germs back then. They, they thought it was silly that, that, you know, that you needed to wash your hands and, you know, different things like that. They, they, I believe one of them was it's not good to take a bath more than four times a year because it, 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 it takes all the, the skin coating and oils off. And I mean, you, you go back and you look at this stuff and it's just ridiculous. Us. The wisdom of man. And you know what? A hundred years from now, if the Lord doesn't come back, those people will look at what we believed and shake their head how stupid we were. 
Man's wisdom is often flawed. Things that we think are right down the road, um, uh, you know, we find out that they're not right. And, and, and you know, me having been in, in the bodybuilding business and, and looking at supplements and things, it's funny how the supplements have, have changed, the, the supplements that, that people use. For instance, when I was young, we used um, liver pills. I used to take 40 liver pills a day. 40 liver pills a day because it was supposed to be a special enzyme and protein in there that would help endurance and help muscle growth. and It was good um, protein and all that kind of stuff. And they've come to find out that, you know, liver isn't so good for men, at least that's what they say now, because it has so much iron in it and that can, you know, cause problems with blood clotting and things. Uh, you know, they thought tomatoes were poison at one time. Eggs, you know, just through my lifetime, eggs are bad for you. Eggs are good for you. Eggs are bad. Only eat the, the whites. Only, you know, on and on and on. Men's, men's, men's wisdom is flawed. Look at what man is saying today. So much of our culture is saying killing your baby is fine. That sexual perversions of all kinds are fine. Um, you know, we can go on and on and on with the twisted mind of men. But God's wisdom is, of course, the power of God. And we can put faith in it and we can trust the wisdom of God. What God says is right and always will be right. You know, I, I used to kind of panic when you'd hear about, they found a new half-ape, half-man skeleton. Oh, they were so excited, they found this new skeleton, it was half-man, it was an half-ape, uh, you know, or, 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 or things to that effect. And I used to kind of panic, oh no, is this, is this going to be the thing that disproves the Bible? Is this going to be the thing that proves evolution? And every single time it turns out it's either a human or it's a monkey or some other kind of creature. It is never, ever, ever truly something that's half human and half ape. And, and they never will find anything like that because nothing like that exists. Oh, there can be all kinds of different monkeys and apes. There could be all kinds of varieties of humans. You know, there's pygmies and there's, there's, there's tribes of people that are like seven feet tall. And there's, there's, there's people that are really wide and big. And there's people that are really skinny and narrow. But, but guess what? They're all human. Oh no, folks. Put your faith in God. Don't panic when nonsense like that comes along. It's going to come and it's going to go. I don't know how many times in my life... Because, you know, I have a thing for dinosaurs. I've always had loved dinosaurs since I was a kid. Still love dinosaurs. And, of course, that's oh, dinosaurs always gets wrapped up in evolution and that nonsense. There again, go to Apologetics Press. They have some great material, some great books on dinosaurs that tells the truth, not this evolutionary nonsense. But anyway, it gets mixed up in all this. And, and, and you know, they say the man didn't live when there was dinosaurs and all that nonsense. And they're always bringing out these, these fossils of half human, half ape. They always turn out to be either one or the other. Put your, put your faith in the one that knows. Put your faith in the one that created everything. God knows everything. Listen, I know, I've known some people who think they know everything. But there's only one who really knows everything, and that's God. James 2, 14 through 17 says, What is a prophet, my brother, my brethren, if someone asks, I'm sorry, let me start again. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food? And one of you says to him, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. See, there's different kinds of faith that the Bible talks about. We can have a dead faith, which means a faith that doesn't put our, our faith into action. We can have faith in the wrong thing. There again, 
there are people out there in the denominational world, there's people out there in the pagan world, and there's people that, that, that are atheists and agnostics that have faith in things that are not real or they're not true. So faith in the Bible, is, biblical faith is inseparable from biblical works. We have to understand that. If we are going to have true biblical faith, we're going to have works that go along with the faith. You can't separate the two. You could say you have faith in God all day long, every day, but if you never put that faith into action by doing the works that God would have you to do, it's a dead, useless faith. It's of it's, it's a no good whatsoever. And also, so this is another proof that we have to understand because we are bombarded by people who say faith only, faith only, but they don't realize that faith itself is a work, do they? Faith itself is a work. Um, you can't have faith without thinking about faith, can you? See, something's got to work. Something's got to work in order for you to have faith. You can't separate biblical faith from biblical works. We must have them both. And finally today, Luke 17, verse 5. Luke 17, verse 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The apostles were concerned about their faith. They wanted their faith to be stronger. And how about you? Do you want your faith to be stronger? We, we should all be working at having a stronger faith. And how do we get a stronger faith? Well, it's like we get anything in this life. we got to practice certain disciplines in order to get them. If you're going to get your body stronger, you've got to work out. And you've got to do it consistently. In other words, you can't just do it once a month. Oh, I did my once a month workout. That's going to do you no good at all. Maybe, maybe even it's going to do you more harm than good. If you're going to learn something, if you're going to invest money in something, you, you, you learn about that thing to invest your money in because your money's important, right? We work out because your body's important. In order to increase our faith, we must, we must exercise our faith. How do we do that? How do we do that? The, the, the sermon today went through it. We study God's Word, we absorb God's Word, and we live God's Word, and we trust God's Word. We keep trusting it, and we force that trust to grow no matter what's going on around us. And therefore, our faith grows in the process. I'm going to be honest with you. Faith is something that was that was hard, and even now it's hard. It, it, it's hard because I've been one of those people who've grown up, you know, an American. You 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 pick yourself up by your bootstraps, and you 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 work hard, and you you know, and you go out and you and you you succeed, and you're independent, and you're strong. And then you know, I've had people who've betrayed me. I've had people who've done me wrong, done dirty things to me, terrible things. So it's it's hard to put your it's hard for me to put my faith and trust into somebody else. Because number one, I feel like I need to accomplish things of myself, by myself, independent from others. And two, it's hard for me to trust anybody because of the experiences I've had in life. So faith comes hard. But as God has taken me through life and through struggles and, and, and things like that, and, and, and as I've studied God's Word and, and have, have um, uh, uh, understand God's Word better, my faith has grown. It's not where it should be. It's not where it wants to be. But it's something that I struggle with. It's something that I strive for. And it's something that I try to strengthen constantly in my life. And I hope that you will do the same. If you are listening to this uh, sermon today as part of your worship service, maybe you're still worshiping at home because of COVID, I hope that you will also do the other things that, that the Bible commands of us to do for worship. Um, prayer, singing, taking an offering for the Lord, and um, uh, taking the Lord's Supper. If you found this video helpful. I hope that you'll share it with others and encourage others to watch this and the others that I've done. 
I just want to thank you again for watching. God bless, and I hope that you have a wonderful week.